Hello students. Today we are going to start a new chapter that is shear stresses in beams. This chapter is the consequence of the bending stresses in beams, the previous chapter. But this chapter is subjected to vertical loading only. So whenever the vertical load is applied on the beam or any object, it causes the shearing of the beam. Shearing means to cut the beam in a vertical plane. You can see in the figure that there is a beam AC on the two supported beams B and D and the one vertical force is applicable on beam AC that is force P which causes the shearing, shearing of the portion C only because on, below the portion C there is no support so portion C will shearing out from the beam. So this type of stresses, this type of loads are known as shear force and shear stresses respectively. So friends we are starting to Calculate the shearing stresses on various type of cross sections like, rec like rectangular section, circular section, I section, T section, L section, etc. There are lots of sections such that on which shearing stresses are causing the failure of the beam. Suppose railway tracks. The railway tracks are of I section. Beam of the multi-storied building are subjected to vertically shearing forces. So, so this type of forces are known as shearing forces which is dangerous for the construction. So let us check how to calculate this type of stresses. In the previous chapter we discussed the theory of simple bending. In this theory we assume that no shear force is acting on the section. But in actual practice when the beam is loaded the shear force at a section always comes into play along with the bending moment. It has been observed that the effect of shearing stress as compared to the bending stress is quite negligible and is not of much importance. But sometimes the shearing stress at a section assumes much importance in the design criteria. In this chapter we shall discuss the shearing stress for its own importance. Let us see one important theory to derive the equation of shear stress acting on the beam. Let us see how. You can see this is the, our main and fundamental theory of shearing stress at a section in a loaded beam. You can see there are two sections. This is the front view you can see and this is the side view in the figure B you can see. This is the neutral axis means centroidal axis passing from the CG of the beam. The layer JK you can see in the figure the layer JK is at a distance of Y, vertical distance of Y from the horizontal rectangular beam. Now on the top of the beam means at the free surface you can see this is the UDL is acting on the beam. UDL means vertical force which can be considered as a shearing force. Now this load generates lots of things such as bending moment M such as bending moment M on the layer or section AB itself and the Opposite moment bending moment M plus DM on the opposite layer CD and the layer AB and the layer CD are at a distance of DX apart. This is the backside width of the beam B which is visible in the side view only. Let us see some notations also. Here you can see in the figure this blue color lines denotes shearing forces, shearing stresses. So due to UDL acting on the beam due to UDL acting on the beam, the layer AB and the layer CD. Actually not only the layer AB and layer CD but in between all the layers are subjected to shearing stresses which is gradually decreasing from top to the neutral axis. At the neutral axis shear stress becomes zero and at the top fiber shear stress is maximum you can say or, it, or you can see it a vice versa, reverse is also possible sometimes. When the uh, shear stress at neutral axis will be maximum and shear stresses at the top fiber will be zero. Okay, It depends on the loading condition, it depends on the beam, it depends on the shear uh, supports also. It depends on the beams also if it is simply supported beam or it is cantilever beam. The conditions for the shearing stresses are gradually changing. Let us discuss it cases by cases. Let us see some notations first. What is M? M is the bending moment at section AB you can see in the figure. What is M plus DM? M plus DM is the bending moment at section CD. 
M plus dm is the bending moment at section CD. You can see in the figure. What is F? F is the shear force at AB. F is the shear force at section AB. What is F plus DF? It is shear force CD. F plus DF is shear force at section CD. And what is I? I is the moment of inertia of the section about its neutral axis. I is the moment of inertia of the section about neutral axis. That's it. The notations and the figures are completed. Now let us move on the data first. Here you can see, now consider an elementary strip at a distance y from the neutral axis shown in the figure. This is the elementary strip JK. Okay. Now let sigma. Sigma, what is sigma? It is the intensity of bending stress across AB at a distance y from the neutral axis. And small a is the cross sectional area of the strip. Strip JK. Okay, we have already discussed in the previous chapter that our main bending equation is m by i is equal to sigma by y. You can make the subject as sigma and you can find sigma is equal to m by i into y. This is for the layer AB only, section AB only. Now for the section CD, the stress is similarly written as sigma plus d sigma is equal to m plus dm upon i m to y. In place of m, there is m plus dm. So this is the bending moment changing at the layer CD in place of layer AB itself. Where, where what is sigma plus d sigma? Sigma plus d sigma is the intensity of bending stress across CD. So this is just the assumptions. These notations you have to take to derive the theory only. Sigma, then bending moment is m. If the bending moment changes from m to m plus delta m, or m plus d m, then the stresses are also changing to sigma plus d sigma. Okay, let us see here. Now this is, you can see, we know that from the force acting across AB. What is force? Formula for the force is equal to stress into area. Now stress means sigma, area means small a. So stress is as per our bending equation m by i m to y, m to area remains as it is. So this is the equation number 1. This is the calculation for the section AB only. Now talking about the section CD, the same equation becomes sigma replaced by sigma plus d sigma. Area remains as it is. M plus dm upon i, y as it is, area as it is. Section 2, so this is known as equation number 2. Now what we want, we want net unbalanced force on the strip. What is net unbalanced force in the sections A, B and section C? That is the bigger force minus smaller force. So bigger force means equation number 2 and smaller force means equation number 1. So you can see this is the equation number 2 minus this is the equation number 1. So we will get the net unbalanced force. By common out uh, Y and A and just uh, uh, taking the simplification in LCMs, we will get dm by I equal to Y into A. This is the net unbalanced force dm by i into y into a. What is this? This force is not visible in the figure actually. This is an imaginary force which is acting on the beam between AB and CD. Between AB and CD, the vertical shear force acting on the beam. Now for the with the help of this shear force, we are starting to calculate shear stress. Let us see. Now you can see here, suppose the total depth, total depth of the beam is d suppose small d okay then here it is neutral axis at which you can take the zero value of the length okay you can take the zero value so from zero to top layer this distance will become d by 2 so we are integrating the force between zero to d by 2 because we want the total shear force so integrating integrating between zero to d by 2 the same equation is dm by i into a into y the variable is dy dm by i is a constant value ay dy is the variable now y dy y dy is integrated as y bar actually limit is not replaced into integration and y equal to not y square by 2 why is it so because uh, y is the distance of one strip jk only okay you can see in the figure y is the distance of one strip jk only but in practice there are infinite number of strips arising in between neutral axis to top layer as well as neutral axis to bottom layer. So for that, for the different strips and for the total entire cross section, we have to find a CG that is known as Y bar. 
where the CG of the beam is located. So we are integrating Y dy as Y bar and we are integrating small a as capital A. Small a means area of the strip JK only while the capital A is the area of the entire cross section. So final equation is dm by i into a y bar. This is equation number 3. Now shear stress. Shear stress tau is equal to according to our formula total force upon area. Now what is total force? Total force is equal to dm by i into a y bar. Total force is dm by i into a y bar divided by area. Now what is the area? We are taking actually cross section area. So cross section area is given by the vertically in the front view length dx and in the back side from this you can see in the figure you from the back side the width is b. So the cross section area on which the shear force is acting it is dx into b. So in the denominator it is dx into b. By simplification we will get dm upon dx into a y bar upon i b. So what is dm into dx? According to shear stress relation in the SFD BMD chapter, what is the relation between bending moment and shear force? That relation is shear force F is equal to dm by dx. You can see dm by dx is equal to F equal to shear force. This relation actually uh, coming into the uh, relation between shear force and bending moment in the SFD BMD chapter. Okay. So now this is the final shear stress tau is equal to F into a y bar upon i b. What is tau? Tau is the shear stress in Newton per mm square. What is F? F is shear force in Newton. What is capital A? Capital A means area of cross section of the any section, rectangular, circular or I section or T section. What is Y bar? Y bar is the distance from the neutral axis to the particular layer at the layer of JK or at the layer of top layer AB, anything. Divided by I, I means moment of inertia of the particular section about centroidal axis. And what is B? B is the width at a particular section at which we have to find the shear stress. So these are the notations with the help of which we can find the value of shear stress at any layers of the beam. So in the numericals from the next lecture we will start the calculation of the shear stress at the particular layers. So best of luck for the next lecture we are starting very tough numericals till then just practice this theory. We will meet in the next lecture with the numericals which are very tough. So be ready for that students.